We begin our study of quantum mechanics by asking the very first question, what is the difference between classical and quantum? And the answer is very simple. The difference is in the amount of information we are, we are talking about. Uh, in general, a quantum system, uh, like if you talk about the, quant the quantum mechanical property of a system, we are trying to extract more information from the system. Um, like for example here, let's say you're traveling in your car. This doesn't look like a car, but it's, let's assume it's a car. And if you are the driver, the only things you will be concerned about will be the speed at which you are going so that you do not get into trouble and how far you have to travel to get to your home or office or distance. So, this, these are probably the, uh, the two uh, information variables you will be needing to complete your journey. But let's say if you are a little more cautious, then, can, then actually you can uh, pay attention to more information like how much fuel is left in your car or how much is the temperature of the engine. Or you can also ask what is the rotation per minute or RPM of my engine. So you see you're adding more and more information or you're trying to extract more and more and, and more information from your system. If you're really a very geeky quantum mechanist, then you can actually ask, uh, you can ask any anything um, which this car um, is related to. For example, this car is made up of so many atoms and you can actually ask how uh, what are different states in which my atoms are or how electrons are revolving around the, um, the nucleus and things like that. And if you keep adding, this will be a plethora of information which you will collect. So we see for cl the classical system, we probably actually will be happy with just these variables. But when we start talking about the quantum mechanical nature of the system, we actually are interested in more and more information or more in intricate and nature of the system. The, the problem is that nature allows us to give information up to a certain extent. We cannot extract every single piece of information from the, uh, from, from the from system and nature actually sort of puts a limit to the amount of information that can be extracted uh, from a system and that is reflected in uncertainty principle. For example, let me show you an example here. Um, like here, what I have is a normal distribution. So a normal distribution which has a mean of zero and has a root mean square uh, uh, standard deviation of one. Now you see they are, these are 100,000, um, well actually I guess 100,000 uh, points which have been thrown on this histogram and let's say you, uh, you pick a point, you pick a, pick a data point which belongs to a normal distribution, you throw on it and you sample it 100,000 times and this is what you will get if you make a plot here. But as you can clearly see that uh, the only piece of information here actually is the mean, the mean of the distribution and the, 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 the standard deviation of distribution. Now you can actually ask yourself that I actually want more information than this and how each uh, how each data point is actually behaving. To do that, what you can do is you can simply actually do a wavelet transform of this, where by wavelet transform we mean by that we split the whole data or we express the whole data on a time frequency map, that is the way you have sampled it with respect to time and on the frequency map, the x-axis here is the is the time and the y-axis is the frequency and you see that each of these data points are actually being expressed as a pixel here and you can see that this particular this particular data point is unknown in frequency uh, in time by this amount of width and this part and and the uncertainty in the, in the frequency is this amount so you see it's more uncertain um, to pinpoint the time of this pixel and less uh, uncertain in pinpointing the frequency of this particular pixel or the data point you can actually uh, do a different kind of wavelet transform and 
you see this is a different kind of wavelet transform. In this case, uh, the time is more precise, but the, uh, the frequency uh, is less precise. Uh, as a matter of fact, the width of the time here multiplied by the width of the um, uh, frequency here is actually equal to 1. So this wavelet transform is sort of preserving the existence of the data point. If this condition is not satisfied that width of this multiplied by width of uh, width of time multiplied by width of frequency is not equal to 1, then the, there will be a problem with the existence of this particular data point, which means for this data point to exist, this condition must be satisfied because one data point uh, you should actually get one when you multiply these uncertainties. So you see actually here that you are more precise in time but you are less uh, precise in frequency. So, um, um, you, so you see, um, the, you, I mean there is no way to achieve both these information that this data point actually has a precise frequency and a precise time. Um, uh, uh, you, this information cannot be extracted because that will sort of contradict with the existence of the pixel. So, to summarize, uh, the quantum uh, mechanical system actually um, deals with um, the in intricate nature of the system where you're trying to extract uh, a lot of information from the system. Um, I'm just saying a lot of information because just to contrast it with respect to classical system because in a classical system you actually sort of talk in terms of the aggregate of the problem like that histogram there. There's an aggregate of the, all the data points. So you have uh, a mean of the system and you have uh, a standard deviation of the system. But in quantum mechanical system uh, with in comparison to a cl the, the classical counterpart you are actually trying to derive more information from it. But there is a caveat and the, that caveat is that nature will not allow to extract uh, information more than a certain amount and that is guided by the uncertainty principle and we saw an example there that if we make uh, if we try to understand the time frequency map of this uh, normal distribution then we cannot really be precise in time and frequency at the same time we can either be precise in time then we have a lot of imprecision, imprecision in frequency and if we try to be precise in, in frequency then we have a lot of imprecision in time so this is sort of uncertainty which is always there which sort of is protecting the existence of the pixel or the data point which is also true uh, with uh, the existence of a particle. So these are the, this is some very basic definition uh, of, uh, in, of classical and quantum mechanics and when people started to observe um, quantum mechanical systems in the early 20th century, they started observing this uncertainty principle and they they were not able to extract a whole lot of information from, uh, from a system. And that actually led to the development of quantum mechanics in how to extract information from a system at the same time not letting the uncertainty principle violate. And that's what we'll, we are going to study in the, in the um, talk about in the uh, in the future classes, future lectures, and that how this construct of quantum mechanics uh, works. Uh, it's not really a theory with a fundamental principle. This was actually developed with the, um, um, with a lot of uh, patching things up, a lot of borrowing things from other theories like uh, wave uh, electromagnetic waves and uh, how how things work uh, whether, whether this will work or not uh, whether this will not work in fact schrodinger equation was actually based on is based something called diffusion equation so it's more or less like a diffusion equation so things i mean there was no not much of a fundamental principle how, like uh, thermodynamics or general relativity on which uh, uh, this uh, uh, the whole theory was developed in fact quantum field theory is more of a theory which has more uh, fundamental background than quantum mechanics. Uh, but we are not talking, going to talk about quantum field theory in this class, we will talk about quantum mechanics in this particular class.